What is up guys, welcome back to another episode of Big Pig Fishing and today we're going to show you how I put my trolling motor on the back of a shadow caster. Alright as you can see guys we're back into the man cave with the kayak. Uh, if you can't tell, it's pretty gross outside. Uh, here in Michigan, that's why we're doing a lot of our videos inside. It's snowy, cold, nasty. So I brought it inside so that we could get some really good coverage of what we did here. So initially, I we had a couple nice winter breaks. Uh, I think two or three days, it was like 60 degrees, no snow, nice and sunny. So I was able to take this outside, get it all set up and painted. Uh, as I put it all together, I got a couple of imperfections in my paint job, so I do got to go back through and repaint this as a whole unit. So don't pick fun at uh, some of the imperfections on the paint job. We're going to work on that. All right, so to keep this video on track, simple, and informational, I'm going to break this down into a few different parts. I'm going to break it down into the motor, mounting, steering, power, and cables. So five different parts, and we're gonna try to touch base on each different part so I don't miss anything, and you guys can get a little bit more of a breakdown in each different section, because that's basically how I installed this trolling motor, was in those different steps, if you will. All right, so step one, we're gonna talk about the trolling motor and uh, how I fabricated this trolling motor to fit better on the back of the kayak and be a little bit more functional. So this is the Motor Guide Machete 2. It's a 55 pound truss motor and it is, it is heavy, guys. And if I didn't have this motor on hand already, I would have went with a 30 pound trolling motor because of how much heavier this is than a 30 pounder. But I already had this on hand. I was trying to do this as cheap as possible, but still do a nice job. And I think this will be fine. I mean, I do have a heavy kayak. It's pretty buoyant. It holds up to 450 pounds. If you haven't seen the review video on this, go ahead and check that out. I'll leave the link here in the description. But anyway, starting off, I just took the head unit off the trolling motor. It was a standard uh, hand-controlled trolling motor. So I just took the head unit off, and I cut this shaft down to an ideal height that I believed would work. The reason why I said believe will work is because I don't know the depth that I need this trolling motor to be at. So I did leave a bit of a gap here uh, between the top of my elbow here and the bottom of my holder. So I do have room to fluctuate if I need to. But all in all, if this setting works for me, I really like the way that looks. It doesn't stick up very high, and it looks it looks professional in my opinion. So that's the trolling motor in a sense. And then what I just did is I topped it off with this, uh, I think it's a three quarter inch PVC elbow with a little fitting in, in here. And I just drilled, it's kinda hard to see, sorry. Drilled right in here and rub, run this uh, cable protector tubing just right inside that. So keeps it nice and watertight. All right, next we're going to talk about mounting this trolling motor onto the kayak itself. And this, to me, was the hardest part of this entire install. And I went through a couple different ideas before I finally found one that I see fit. So at first, as you can see these holes here, I utilized, I had a set of outriggers on here when I first bought the kayak that I installed myself was my first modification and I haven't showed you guys that yet and I will eventually. So I went into these holes and I put L brackets that went up and, and so like that and then I had a piece of wood in the back here basically acting like the back of a John boat or you know a, a normal boat and then this just crimped right onto it and it hung like a normal trolling motor. The issue with that is it was putting a lot of stress on this plastic right here. And I was afraid that if I hit something, 
that it could potentially damage or rip this right out because that was the only place it was anchored onto the kayak. So I scrapped that idea and started over and basically came up with this solution by watching a YouTube video and I don't know the name of the YouTuber who did it and I can't find the video again, so I can't give him credit. But basically I took two pieces of wood inside this molded handle and basically sandwiched it together between the handle while including this part of the mount of the trolling motor. And I'll explain a little bit more in detail. So I took these five inch bolts, drilled all the way down between two pieces of wood that I had traced out to fit perfectly inside this mold here. And basically just attached it to the bottom with another bolt, tightened it up really good, and it sandwiched those two together between this handle to hold it on there. And obviously this part of the trolling motor is bolted on, so it's with it. And what that did was I didn't have to drill any more holes into the kayak. If I ever want to take this off and have a perfectly normal kayak again, I can. And there will be no holes drilled into the handle. I don't want to ramble too much about this mount, but it was the hardest part of this setup. So I just wanted to touch base pretty clearly on it. And uh, basically from there, I ended up cutting off the... The screw lock bolts, there's bolts that go in here that tighten this all the way up to this bracket. I just cut those off and uh, this is just kind of how it sits. This is permanently attached to the kayak. This will always be here unless of course I take this off but I'm saying for my personal use that's always going to be on the kayak. Alright so hopefully this camera angle is pretty good. I'm by myself right now so I'm having a hard time kind of doing camera work but anyway. That's my dog. Say hi, Luna. Anyway, so the way that this sits right here, there was a pin that runs through right here where I have this wing nut, and it was a permanent bolt that was kind of welded in there, and that is what helps this swivel, right? It swivels on that bolt. So I thought if I could drill this out and put a bolt in there with a, with a wing nut, why can't I use that as the anchor point to come on and off? Because I wanted to be able to take my trolling motor off when I'm not using it. If I'm fishing a tournament that doesn't allow trolling motors or whatever the case may be, uh, or I just want to go river floating with some buddies, that I can take this trolling motor off and essentially have a basic kayak again. So what I did was, that is what these carabiners are for, and we'll go over that when we go over steering. But I just undo this bolt right here the wing nut slides off obviously you got to put a little pressure upwards because of because of the weight of the trolling motor of course and you pull it off and you undo your clips here your carabiners for your steering linkage and we'll go over that and then my wire for my cable once again we'll go over that and then this just slides right up and off and out of the way and then these cables will slide up and then this is all that's left on the kayak and that doesn't weigh anything more than you know it would matter and it's secured on there and it just looks like a normal kayak again kind of a cool little fin look too if you if you don't mind me pointing in so yeah that is how I mounted this and this kind of gives you a better look of basically how I sandwiched this I guess between these two pieces of wood. All right, so next we're gonna get into a little bit more fun part. I understand that the mount in the motor was a little bit boring, but hopefully it was informative. So this is going to be the steering linkage and how I steer this motor when I'm up front in the driver's seat. Obviously I took off my handle, so I can't just reach back and turn it. So I introduced this foot pedal uh, lever mechanism and it's very similar to that of a higher end kayak for the ruddering system. It just consists of cables that hook to a joint and use leverage to turn your motor, or in their case, a rudder. So first off, I just took this galvanized steel uh, circle, if you will. I'm not exactly sure what it's called. I found it at Ace Hardware and it just fits right over the shaft, tightens down with an Allen nut on the back, and I pre-drilled and then tapped five sixteenths for these eye bolts into this steel. And off those eye bolts, like I said, these are 
six inch eye bolts and I just hooked these carabiners to it. Um, and as I showed you, the carabiners are specifically for taking off my motor. And to the carabiner, I'm running these, uh, I think this is 3 30 seconds uh, galvanized steel cable. And that runs all the way up to my foot pedals, which we'll get up there in a second. But inside here, let's see if I can bring it closer. From there, the galvanized steel cable runs into this quarter inch tubing and inside the tubing is a little brass fitting that's got the brass fitting has an out outer diameter of a quarter inch obviously uh, to go inside the quarter inch plastic tubing and what that the purpose of that is is when this is going back and forth from, forth from steering it's not going to cut into the side of the kayak or put any abrasions in there when this is turning in and out so that's basically just to prevent any damage from the kayak because I mean this could use a hacksaw or it would be used as a hacksaw if you know what I mean so I just took some precaution there and put that brass fitting in there all right so moving up we have the tube from the back that comes right up here and I ran that underneath all the way here just right underneath everything and in a previous video, I showed you guys how to install this hatch into the back of these shadow casters. And the reason I did this hatch was for this trolling motor mod. So if you haven't seen that video, that'll be linked up in the corner here. And this is an essential part of this. And we'll get into this. It says wires. But I use this hole to be able to feed that tubing through the front and the back. So, essential. Anyway, the the wire or the sorry yes the cable and the tubing come all the way up here drilled the hole right here next to my seat bracket and poked out the rubber the rubber tubing with the steel cable and the purpose of the rubber tubing is if any water does happen to get inside this little brass fitting which it will then it kind of does like a drip effect and will drip into the inside of the kayak and it'll just run right off into the into the scupper holes so that's the idea and no water can really get into the hull if it's running through this tubing and then the steel cable just comes up here and clips to the end of my foot pedal uh, switch here and this switch just basically locks the foot pedal or unlocks the foot pedal and once again check out the review video it kind of further explains that and from there, with it unlocked, I can kind of show you guys how this thing operates. So just like a leverage pulley system, you push up, the other one's going to come back, right? You push up, the other one's going to come back. And it's like butter. Alright, next we'll kind of talk about the wiring up of the motor. So there's four wires that come out of the, the shaft of your trolling motor when you take off your head unit. And that's going to be a red, black, yellow, and blue wire. For this specific modification, I only utilized the red and black wire. So the red and black wire come out and attach to this it's a Minn Kota receptacle, and you can buy them off Amazon. That's like 40 bucks for the pair of them. And basically, it's just a plug. So you mount the plug onto your kayak, flips open, nice and waterproof, and when you connect it, it obviously creates your circuit. So from there, I ran my, cape, my red and black cable all the way inside the kayak, all the way up to the top. And here's where we get to the battery and some of the components for the battery. Now, if you look real close, you can see that the battery is slightly at an angle. And the reason for that is because of the tri-hull effect here in the girdle, or in the, in the hull. It works perfectly for just mounting or setting the battery inside kind of at an angle, and it holds it, and this battery isn't going anywhere. And before you guys freak out or have any concerns I did talk to some professionals it is fine to store the battery at an angle even on its side sometimes and it's not going to affect anything it's not dangerous so from there 
the the wires ran up from the top or from the back of the kayak all the way up inside the hall to this RF switch. And from this RF switch, it kind of just piggybacks off into the battery. So this is just your standard marine battery. This is a 625 uh, deep cycle marine battery. Nothing special. 60, 70 bucks at Walmart. But what I want to talk to you about is this RF switch. The purpose of this is so that I can turn on and off my trolling motor from inside the seat, right? I don't have any handle to turn on and off, so I need to be able to start and shut off my trolling motor. And I was thinking that instead of just having a switch that says on and off, I need to go in reverse too, right? So I picked up this reverse polarity switch and what it does is reverse the pull of power. So now I can also flip the circuit to basically tell the motor that it needs to go in reverse. And I'll show you how that works in a second. So what's nice about this is I just put a little piece of Velcro on the bottom here and I went into this flat spot inside. So this just goes right up and under onto this and just Velcro's on there. And I have no issues with that coming off. And that just sits right inside the, the hall of the kayak, right in the front, giant front hatch. So this is the reverse polarity remote control that operates my trolling motor when I'm in this seat. So obviously there's two different functions, forward and reverse. And for operation, you click once and it keeps the motor on. Click it again to shut it off. Click it once for reverse. Click it again to shut it off. Very, very simple, very effective. So there's a couple of options I could have done for power. One of them was obviously the reverse polarity switch and the second one was a speed control switch. And the speed control switch is basically a little unit that you would mount somewhere reachable up here and you turn the switch as a dial to one between one and five and then reverse so it acts just like the operation system of the normal kayak. So you could do a speed control. So you could slower to faster, however you want it. I did not want to go that route for a couple different reasons. The main reason would be uh, drilling another hole somewhere up here to have that pretty much permanently installed there. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what modifications I'm planning on doing with this. Eventually, I'm going to upgrade kayaks anyway. So I wanted to keep permanent modifications a little more simple. So I just went with the reverse polarity switch. The reason why I chose this also over the speed control switch is I'm not planning on trolling spot to spot. The purpose of the kayak motor for me was that I could make runs to different spots on the lake real quickly. So, you know, I'm at my at the dock and, you know, ready to go, turn it on effortlessly troll all the way to where I need to be, cut it off, paddle around the area for a little bit with my paddle, and need to make another run. You know, very simple. This is just for making runs, basically. Getting me to the spots a little quicker, making me a little bit more efficient on the water. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully this video helped you and inspired you to do a trolling motor install yourself. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comments below. And remember, I'm proud of you.